Is this one? Yeah. Hi, good evening. Um, okay, quick show of hands to see who's in my audience. How many game developers do we have on the audience tonight? Okay, not that many. Right, okay. And how many marketing people do we have? Marketing industry, brand people do we have? And, ah, right, okay, fine. Perfect. Okay, well, I'm Caroline. I am Chief Operations Officer and co-founder of a startup called Playmob. Um, what we do and what I'm going to talk about tonight is what happens when all the whales are extinct. We work in the gaming sector, so this is going to be quite games focused, but I'll try and keep it um, as general as possible so people who are not in gaming can follow. Okay, so just a quick overview of the points I'm going to cover tonight. Um, something called free to play, which will become apparent quite quickly. Um, current monetization landscape within games. Um, the future opportunities as we at Playmob see them. Um, some early examples of these opportunities. A tiny plug for Playmob, obviously, because I wouldn't be standing up here otherwise. <laughs> and a quick summary of everything that I go through. So, free to play or freemium is the way forward for social and mobile games. But what does this mean? So free to play basically means that players can come to your game to play it without spending any money in order to access the content in your game. So you can find a game like SimSocial, you can create an account and you can start playing. But how do game developers make money from this? Well, they sell virtual goods. This is how they monetize games which is why it's called freemium. These virtual goods have a benefit to the game, which will help the player advance or advance yeah. <laughs> in their game role. This is a virtual tractor or a virtual good. You probably start the game with a basic tractor, but if you want to advance in front of your peers, then you can pay for the next model instead of waiting for the game time to chug through to get the virtual tractor. It's not just game enhancing products though. You can decorate your avatars with things like hats, scarves, clothing. You can give your players or your characters energy within the games. Or you can even buy extra lives in the games. Now, as with all sales, there is an 80-20 rule within the gaming market at the moment. 80% of the people who play these games do not pay to play them. So you've only got 20% of the people playing the games on which you can make money from. Which is pretty important if you're a small game development studio looking to pay wages. So, the gaming industry has given some nice titles to these people who pay. Of the 20% of the payers of games, we've got whales which is the biggest group. They represent 10% of the payers, but they are also the most lucrative players. They have an ARPU, which is a nice acronym, average revenue per paying user of about $20 per month. Dolphins are 20% of, or 40% of players, which only spend an average of $5 a month. And minnows are 50% of the payers. So 10% of your overall game players will only spend about $1 per month. Even so, the virtual goods market is a big market. In 2011, approximately $8 billion was spent on virtual goods. So these whales, they're pretty important. Just to reinforce that, the whales are responsible, 10% of your players are responsible for 45% of your income in any game. This is just an example of a couple of the games that are available on Facebook and other gaming and other platforms at the moment. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. There are thousands of games out there. It's an incredibly crowded marketplace and it's a marketplace that's growing. If you've got more, more games to play, then your, the opportunity to be able to monetize your whales is going to become less and less, meaning that you're running the risk of your key revenue generators becoming extinct in your game.
So, given the crowded marketplace, and given that a lot of the players are now getting savvy to the monetization opportunities within games, we think that there's a new opportunity for game developers to tap into in order to cast their net wider, to attract more of their players and turn them into pairs. At this year's South by Southwest Festival, Bizstone, co-founder of Twitter, suggested that philanthropy is the new marketing. And I agree with him. In fact, Playmob agrees with him. We suggest that game developers looked to start creating and running charity-led monetization campaigns in their games. Well, what does that mean? What's a charity-led monetization campaign? What happens is a game developer can nominate one of these virtual objects, or an energy pack, or a life pack, and they can tag it with a charity, so that each time this virtual object is purchased, a small donation is collected for the charity. So you can start engaging with a wider net of your players by tapping into something that's close to their heart. Also, in order to keep them play paying in your game, you price the object that's for charity just below the amount of credits that they might purchase in a credit bundle. So they've got some extra cash to play with. So then they can continue spending in your game. All of a sudden, you're not just relying on the whales, you've got a whole new section of pairs to continue to get money from. Here are a couple examples of how this model works in the real world. You buy a sandwich from Eat, 10 pence goes to a homeless shelter. You buy a packet of Pampers, a child in a third world country gets a life-saving vaccination. Or you buy a smoothie as well, also going to a homeless shelter. Must mean we're in Christmas time, I made that slide. And there are some early examples in the gaming world of such charity-led monetization campaigns. Farmville. We all love to hate Farmville, really, don't we? But when the Haiti earthquake struck, it raised nearly $1.5 million in five days and raised a total of $3 million across the duration of that campaign. Now, the interesting thing about this campaign is 80% of the people who engaged in buying this particular charity-associated object hadn't bought anything else in the game before this. 80% of new first-time buyers in the game. Weetopia is another game which has so far, through the sale of virtual items, helped to construct a three-classroom building and helped, which holds 112 students and three teachers in Haiti. It's also helped to feed 30,000 people in Haiti as well. Again, through sales of items in their game. Ecotopia. <laughs> Everything's called something utopia. <laughs> They've managed to plant 25,000 trees through ch sales of virtual items in their games. So again, these are numbers which are not just money. They're numbers that actually have a real-world impact and a real-world significance, which is an awful lot nicer than just listening to what's the ARPU, what's the CPU, what's your CPA, what's your DAUs. You know, you can turn around and go, God, my games actually help to change lives. And this is what we at Playmob are trying to help game developers do. We are helping them to make a difference, to increase their conversions, and to stand out from the crowd. We're asking game developers to come to our site and have a good think about which one they want to be. At the end of the day, it's a win-win situation for everyone. Our model works on a revenue share opportunity so game developers can earn some money, the charity earns some money, and we have our own cut as well for initiating and managing the campaign. We've done a couple of test campaigns just now, so far. Um, in November, we ran a campaign with um, a charity called Help USA. We helped to feed over 700 people on Thanksgiving, 700 homeless people in New York City on Thanksgiving. Prior to that, in September, we managed to help feed 3,500 children in Kenya during the famine in East Africa. 
And we've currently got ongoing campaigns with um, Magic Cats where you can purchase items which will help save snow leopards and jaguars. And we have a water aid campaign in a fantastic new Facebook game called Music Festivals. I'm sure we've probably all been to a music festival before. If you go and play this game, you can purchase some toilets for your festival goalers. And these toilets are sponsored by WaterAid, which means you will also be helping sanitation works in third world countries, vital sanitation works in third world countries. Check out the game, it's really fun to play. So, just to quickly recap, it's a very crowded marketplace out there, and it's going to get busier and noisier. So games, need to find a way to compete and attract the attention of their whales before their whales go extinct. Especially if they're going to rely on the free-to-play model. They want to be able to cast their net wider and to engage with a larger crowd of players in order to turn these into pairs. And we believe that charity-inspired monetization campaigns are the way forward in 2012. Thank you very much. <laughs> yep, I'll happily take some questions if anyone's got any. Thank you. <laughs> I see somebody there really wants to ask a question. Awesome. Thanks, uh, Caroline. Um, yeah, so uh, we're gamers, and uh, it's really interesting what you guys are doing. I'm just wondering. The principle behind it is more people, in theory, will buy because they know money will be given to a charity. Do you have like correlated data on like number of buyers of virtual goods prior to PlayMob coming in, and then after? It? Yep. So in our first campaign, we've got some data at the moment which showed that this was the Kenyan campaign. Um, out of the players that engaged with that. I think it was around 5% were non-payers, which had turned into payers. Now, this was just a very small campaign. We literally pulled it together in about the space of a week. And we didn't do any pre-promotion in the game before it. We just basically dropped in a virtual hat, which players could discover themselves. And we just thought, right, let's just see how this is going to pan out. It was completely experimental. Um, we had an overwhelming response. The players themselves actually recreated. So I'll give you a bit of context. The game is a virtual world which is using GPS locations so that you in a fantasy world. So what the players did for this campaign is they found the GPS locations of the village in Kenya that this money was being raised for, recreated the village in their game and then at the end of the two-week campaign went and dropped off all of the hats that they purchased for the campaign in the village. So it's still there in the game. If you go and play Parallel Kingdom, you will be able to go and find Marzabit Kenya in the game. So yeah, it's, it's um, I will not lie, it's still a very new opportunity. It's still a, an emerging market, but it's one that we think could gather momentum and traction extremely quickly. And for people who are managing brands, we've also come up with a solution whereby a brand, if they want to inject the, some of their CSR to um, their advertising. They can sponsor some of these virtual items as well. So as you saw the energy drinks with Red Bull, you could have a Red Bull drink which is also providing energy for, um, I don't know, <laughs> on the spot. Um, yeah, to help kids um, play football or something like that, I don't know. Yeah. Any other questions? And thank you. We have. Did I see someone raising their hand? No. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Caroline. Thank very, you very much, uh, people.